Adult cod spawn from late winter to spring. The females will expel their eggs and then the males will compete to fertilize them. The fertilized eggs drift with the ocean current and as they drift they will develop into larvae. Depending on which ocean they were spawned in, the age of maturity will vary. They are considered mature at ages 2 to 4 in the West Atlantic, but as old as 8 years in the Northeast Arctic. Cod can live for 13 years to 25 years. Cod are considered to be a shoaling and schooling fish, which means they stay together. Shoaling is if they hang out together for social reasons or just to fit in and avoid predators. Schooling is when they gather in a group that swim in the same direction. They may shoal together for protection and feeding, and they may school together for much the same reasons, but in a more coordinated manner. Most of the fish that you see here are codlings, and they are also known as cod fry or tom cod. They range from 8 to 35 centimeters in length. After surviving their trip from the mid-ocean currents, they gathered here alongside our fish plant wharf. At this age, they are eating just about anything that is in their reach. The large fish will eat the smaller ones if need be. The debris that you see floating here is most likely offal residue from the recent production at the fish plant. This could be a result of either snow crab, capon, or mackerel processing. On this day, the view is much clearer. As mentioned before, these codlings seem to be demonstrating a shoaling effect, as although they are in the same vicinity to one another, they are uncoordinated and just milling around the area or moving about without any certain purpose. I notice when I move to this area of Newfoundland that the locals refer to fish species in a slightly different way. If they refer to a capelin, it was a capelin. If they made reference to a mackerel, then it was a mackerel. But if they referred to a cod, it was simply called a fish. Upon my research for this film, I discovered the probable justification for this reference as in biology, a codfish is called Goddess Morhua. Apparently, the name Goddess is derived from the Greek name Kados, which means fish. I guess along the path of time, there may have been some Greek culture passed along to the descendants of this fine area of Newfoundland. Cod are omnivorous carnivores, which mean that they feed on any animal that they can stick in their mouths including the cannibalistic method of eating their own, but that is usually a tactic of the larger cod. These smaller cod, for example, like to eat flatfish fry. Did you know that a cod's diet affects its skin color? Cod that feed on crab and other crustaceans have a brownish skin, while cod that feed on other fish take on a more greenish-blue appearance. Their teeth can differ too, as a cod that feeds on crustaceans will have dull, flat teeth, from all the wear of crushing the hard shells of their prey, whereas others will have sharp teeth as they feed only on fleshy sea life. I am confident that I share the view of most all Newfoundlanders that these little fish will grow and help sustain a new presence in both our inshore and offshore fish stocks. We would all like nothing better than to see a future where our children and grandchildren can once again go out in a small open boat and fish away at their own leisure for their winter supply of this wonderful healthy meal. As depicted here, these shoaling fish have begun to school. It is a good indication of a growing cod stock. Recently, OCI Fortune fish plant was reopened and is now once again processing cod and yellowtail fish. Let us hope that this is a good indication that our resources are rebounding and that it continues to grow and let us all hope that the fish continue to return to our shores and will never ever, as before, go away. <laughs>